Well, hey everybody, Matt Kloskowski here, and in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to uh, remove or reduce tan lines. Uh, you'll find them a lot in wedding photos. Uh, you know, the bride or the bridal party wants to go grab a tan before they uh, they get married or before the wedding. You'll find them a lot in vacation photos. So uh, if you have a photo that's being troubled by it, hopefully these couple of tips help you out. Uh, let's go ahead, and uh, we've I've got my photo open here. We're going to first add a cur I've got two ways to do this. I'm going to give you a couple of ways and, and it, what may end up being is a combination of all of them. So um, I'm going to go to my adjustments panel. If you don't see it and just head up to the window menu, go to uh, adjustments over here and we'll go ahead and let's add a curves adjustment layer and we're just going to drag the curve down. I don't know how much at this point I'm, I'm not necessarily going to worry about it. I just want to do it. want to do it enough that I, I know I, there's a change on the photo here. So I've dragged the curve down. Now what we're going to do is the layer mask is white, which means we're seeing the entire curves adjustment layer. I'm going to just change the layer mask to black. The real easy way to do that is command I on the Mac or control I on the PC, I for invert, and that will flip white to black. And so now, now the curves layer is there. It's just, we're not seeing it. Okay. And uh, so from here, what we want to do is, we're going to go grab our brush tool, hit B for brush, and uh, I'm going to set the opacity to about 60%. And really easy way to do that is just hit the number six once you choose the brush tool, and that'll set it to 60%. Of course, you can just come up here and move things around that way. All right, so from here, we have our brush set to 60%, and then we just need to change the brush to the opposite color of the layer mask. So the brush needs to be white. And what we're going to do is hit the right bracket key. And this is pretty important for, for this technique. It's going to come into play with this brush and also with uh, the tool that we'll use next. But up in your brush preferences, you want to make sure your hardness is all the way down to zero. You want the softest brush possible. And what we're going to do is we're just going to start to paint over the area. And so essentially we're darkening, darkening, and I apologize ahead of time. It's, you know, if you think about where tan lines occur, uh, they occur. Um, there's no way I can get out of working in the area that I am going to be working on, uh, on this woman. So just keep that in mind. Um, but I'm going to undo for a second here. Uh, go back there, flip that to black. So again, we got our brush tool set to white, and we're just going to brush down, brush down. And then if it's not enough, you can build it up. Because remember, we're set to about 60%. And sometimes it even helps, you know, pull it down more. And we're just building the effect up a little bit here. And the more you brush, the more that you'll see it. Now, it's going to start to to bleed over into other areas you don't want it to. So then you just flip your foreground color from white over to black. I usually hit the left bracket key, make the brush a little bit smaller. And now I'll get a little bit more refined with it. And now I'll try to just kind of eat in on the outside edges of where the tan lines are and see if we can get rid of the, the excess area that I painted over, okay? So a few things about this technique. Um, a lot of times it relies on the color of the skin. So we can turn this layer on and off and it definitely did help. There's a, I can still see some of it and that's why I wanna show you the technique because it has worked many times for me. I don't think it does great on this photo. I think it, it, it does okay. It's probably better than it was, but I think the second technique will actually work a little bit better here. Um, but it's a good start. It's something, it's, it's an easy one to try. And you can, then you can always come up here, double click your curves layer, and now you can adjust that curve to kind of match the skin. And then the other thing is if the skin got, if, if they have a little bit of a sunburn, then what's going to happen is it's going to make this super red, all right? And what you can always try is change this blend mode from normal, because curves will change the color too. Change this blend mode from normal to luminosity, which will tell the curves layer, hey, don't mess with the color, just mess with the luminance of the layer, which again, in this case, I don't necessarily think is helping us out too much, but it's just something to keep in mind. She did get a Looks to me like she got a little red, so I actually want a little bit of color there. But uh, again, sometimes that sometimes that color change can actually hurt you. So trying to give you all kinds of different things to think about uh, when it comes to this technique. Okay, so let's hide the curves again. 
That one has worked for me on many, many different photos that I've had to do this on. I'm not crazy about it in this one. So when you when that one doesn't work, what I'll usually do is go to the next one. I'll add a new layer on top of my original layer here. Um, I'm going to hit S for the clone stamp tool. And by the way, I got to give credit where credit's due. This uh, photo is from a friend of mine, Robin Reese Photography. Make sure I put her uh, link on the, the, the page here. Um, and also, guys, if, uh, if, if you like these videos, uh, if you can do me a big favor, um, just subscribe or, or like my page here. That's really the, the best thing that you can do if you do like these videos. It'll, uh, um, it'll help me out a little bit in getting the word out to you. Uh, I've got a YouTube page, any Facebook page, so depending on where you're watching this. Um, and then, of course, uh, whether it's on the YouTube page, there's a, a little bell that you can ring to get notifications so that... Uh, you'll get you'll get notified when I uh, post a video and same thing on Facebook. Uh, there's a little notification area. OK, so back to our story here. We got our new layer and what we're going to do is press S for the clone stamp tool. It's located right over here in the toolbox. We want to make sure we get that, not the pattern, but the clone stamp tool up here. Uh, we also want to make sure that sample all layers is checked up here. Uh, that's a big one. It's it's usually not checked by default and uh, it's probably one of the most important settings in the clone stamp tool. So make sure sample all layers is checked. Again, opacity at about 40%. We're gonna zoom in a little bit to this one. Um, and, uh, and so what we do with the clone stamp tool is you have to hold down your option key on the Mac or your alt key on the PC and you sample, okay? Now, this is the reason why I want a really low opacity brush because I'm gonna, I'm gonna let this build up. I don't want to sample the skin. skin. Skin tones change and you really have to blend this in so you don't necessarily wanna clone that skin tone over to here, but you wanna take some colors from it. So we're gonna sample, option or alt click. Then we're gonna go over here and we're gonna just start painting. And you can see the little cursor kind of follows you around. So you always have to be kind of you always have to watch where that cursor is because as it starts to dip down into a darker area, see it starts to pull that into the photo. All right. So once that starts to happen, then I've got to come back up here and sample again up here, and then I can go down here and start to paint. All right. There's a to me, there's a little bit of a blemish on the skin over here. I'm not quite sure what it is. I'm not sure if it's an uneven tan. Um, whatever it is, but we have to be careful with that because I, I normally like if I was over here, I would sample and then start painting over here and I'd be just fine with it. But if I sample that, I, I'm afraid we, we, you know, we might start bringing that elsewhere. So again, we're just going to keep coming up here and sampling. And the more you paint, the more it kind of paints over that because we have that low opacity brush. Okay. We can even sample from over here on the left hand side or the right hand side. And of course, my cursor went over the uh, the necklace there. And if we want to, we can even start to paint over that if it's a problem. So it's kind of kind of killing two birds with one stone there. So I think that side's looking pretty good. We can move over here to the other side. And again, just sample. Every time you see that little crosshair, I'm sampling. I'm holding down Option or Alt and then I'm painting. So anytime you see that, I'm resampling the area to kind of reset where my cursor is so that it's not gonna go and kind of dip into a part of the photo that I don't want it. Okay, and then depending on how, uh, how, how the, the, she used creative depth of field here, so, uh, so the flowers are more in focus and she starts to fall out of focus so we don't have to be very careful. Um, but of course, you know, depending on your photo, you might have to be a little bit more refined hit the left bracket key, make your brush smaller, smaller, and, uh, and to start to work on those areas there. But I would always, it's on a separate layer. So what I would do is I would still keep a pretty large brush, even if I had to be more refined with it, I would keep a large brush. And if I had to start to dip over the clothes, I would do it because that large brush really helps me blend things in. And then what I would do is come over here and add a layer mask to that layer set my foreground color to black and grab my brush tool and then just use the layer mask and start to chip away at anywhere that I spilled over that I don't want it to be on. Okay, so I would still use that larger brush because I think it just helps to blend things in a little bit better. So let's go back over to this side here 
Oh, got it. And make sure when you paint, you're not painting on the layer mask. If you ever do add one, got to paint on that layer thumbnail here. So I think that's looking pretty good. Um, and then the, the last thing would be sometimes the color could look off. Give that little blend mode a try again. Try changing this to luminosity. See if that helps. I think it desaturates it a little bit too much. But again, I'm just trying to give you a couple of different things to, to always look at because every photo is going to be a little bit different. They're not all going to be exactly like this photo. So I want to give you a couple outs um, in, case, uh, in case you run into something like that. Okay, so let's take a look. That's before, that's after, one more time, before, after. I wasn't going to include it, but I'll do just one more. And that's, again, just, you know, every technique works a little bit different. The clone stamp one is my favorite, but another one that, that I can usually revert to if I'm still having trouble, uh, the healing brush. And the way the healing brush works is you do sample. The spot healing brush, you don't sample. But with the healing brush, you do sample. So you can option or alt click and make sure you make a new layer. Change this to all layers up here. Option or alt click to sample and then go over there and paint. And the, the difference with the clone stamp tool and the healing brush is the healing brush is going to look at what you sampled from. It's going to look at what you're painting over. And it's going to try to meld the two of them together. And sometimes that's a good thing. And sometimes that's a bad thing. Sometimes you just can't get it right. And other times, you know, it does a, a perfect sample, but that's, that's the difference. Clone stamp tool is pixel for pixel. What you sample from and what you paint over, that's what you're getting. You're getting exactly what you sampled from. Healing brush is looking at what you sampled from. It's looking at what you painted over and then it's saying, Hey, let me figure out a mix between these two. And again, sometimes that mix is good. Sometimes that mix doesn't get you quite where you want it to be. So uh, just another tool to uh, throw into the repertoire of tricks there. Okay, folks, thanks so much once again for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed and I will talk to you again real soon.